Hello and welcome back uh, to round number five of the Pokemon Regional Championship Cologne. I'm David Hochmann, joined by Martin Wagner. Yeah, still doing great, uh, still being excited, um, waiting for the players to get ready and um, yeah, being everything being set up and yeah, excited to be here for some more Pokemon and high level gameplay. Yeah, last round we had an audio issue which we really want to apologize for. Um, it should be fixed now. Uh, we will see uh, how it works out throughout the day, so uh, yeah, we are really hoping that it does, uh, very sorry about that, um, but let's not think too much about the past, let's look at the next round. Round number five, we have uh, two very accomplished players here, um, Alex Dow and Thomas Just. Um, Thomas used to play for Great Counters, um, I'm not entirely sure if that's still... Um, yeah, if that's still around, um, he's, he's pretty strong. Um, we, if you look at his results, uh, he had some very strong regional finishes in the past, a few top eights, and then also he was top 32 at the international. And then also, more recently, he had some uh, regional finishes as well. Um, but I think nothing from the current season, so uh, no World Championship, no Sheffield, uh, no... Uh, DC Open or something like that, um, but he definitely knows his stuff. So um, yeah, I'm, I don't know what either player is um, playing currently, um, but yeah, on the other side, we have uh, Alex Dow, who is not wearing his headphones yet, uh, which well they should do later, so we can also talk about uh, like more or less secret information, so like which deck they are playing and such. Um, information that should not be be revealed to both players, yeah. just to the casters and the um, audience. Yeah, yes. so Alex, if you look at the accomplishments, also very if, the best, if the best results very and the latest results are very different, you know they have a lot of uh, different results, uh, so he, he really liked Gyarados, <laughs> I remember that season, uh, where he won and then also uh, made the top 16. Um, he also is the uh, unofficial re uh, national champion of the United Kingdom. <laughs> Um, back during these times uh, and I'm really excited to see what he's bringing because uh, when we saw his deck so we get like a little glimpse of it just said others so uh, well this is a very great RK9 feature they're letting us um, use here as well where we can see a little bit of the deck when we choose the pairings um, and for Alex it was just others so we get oh a wait, small that's preview amazing. And yeah, the yeah. preview did not tell us anything about his deck, which is uh, really exciting. So yeah, so we should get the uh, list at any point um, during this game, so we will be able to talk about it uh, more precisely. But I'm very excited uh, to see um, what these players uh, brought to the tournament. They are not 4-0, but they are 301, so there's still everything in for them. Just need to win a few games and yeah. maybe. Maybe lose one, tie one. Uh, we we can see. If um, you're three or one, you can start like uh, you. You can be pretty confident that you will make day two and that you will be able to advance. Like going four or two, uh, four four or one, um, and winning this round is super important because then you just need to uh, from the next two rounds you just need to um, win two more and then then you're in. So a uh, strong start is really important in a big tournament like this. Um, yeah, and 301 is uh, definitely really, really good. And can you give you the, like, the confidence boost you need to push through all the way? Yeah, and we are now seeing uh, the setup. Alex already placed his prize cards. Uh, I see um, Naga Nagel in there. So mm -hmm. maybe actually he's playing a very similar deck to um, to Jack Old, his teammate, who we uh, streamed already uh, during the tournament. Um, yeah, Alex is doing uh, pretty good, obviously. Uh, Thomas is showing us his uh, Malamar deck, just the uh, no usual culprits with the uh, Malamar Jinx, Ditto, cards you would expect this deck to play. Uh, Jinx, of course, now uh, pretty nice because it's able to take uh, knockouts. Um, so the players are allowed to start now, but it doesn't seem like... Uh, yeah, so... They can just start now, so 50 minutes. Um, let's go from here As into the see. game. Both players. Chirachi being flipped. Yeah, very yeah. nice start for both players, no matter. Um, That's what, what you want to see, right? Well, you don't want to see that many fires yeah. part of the Stellar Wish, okay. but 
Uh, well, he he got at least he got something, so yeah. that's definitely something to work with. Um, even though he didn't, well, have a lot of options uh, to choose from. And well, yeah, well, like we said, when we look at the prize cards, um, Alex does have Naganagel in his prize cards, also Hoopa. Um, yeah, so maybe it's very similar to the Terminator deck uh, that we already saw, but. Yeah, we got a really small glimpse of the deck, but I can't really make out too much. Uh, so yeah, we'll we will have to guess a little bit. Yeah, but uh, he's uh, he's against uh, up against Malama, which is well known. But he doesn't know it just yet. So um, yeah, it's I think it's really interesting when you see Jirachi being flipped. You don't know what you're up against when you're going first, so you d don't really know what strategy is like, th what what play is the optimal play to make because you have no idea about the matchup. Um, and usually against Malama you want to avoid putting down uh, GX Pokemon because they can swing the price trade very well, but Alex has to go for Dedene and just throw his hand away and get a new, um, yeah, replenish, uh, replenish it with six new cards. Yes, but these six cards don't look that promising. So here we see a Mewtwo in his hand, which he just straight discards, so I'm not entirely sure what the Mewtwo's attack does, but um, if it's important in this matchup, which of course Alex doesn't really know, he just saw a Jirachi, so it can be a lot of uh, different decks, uh, which was probably the reason why he was kind of hesitant of actually discarding it. I think um, Mewtwo attacks with Psychic Energy, and I don't see any Psychic Energy in Alex's deck, so yeah, he definitely can't utilize it. I think it's there for the ability to put, um, like when it goes from the hand to the bench, it puts ah, one to support use a again. Ah, okay, puts yeah, supporter sure. card on top of the deck, so you can you can do a lot of cute stuff with like um, Acrobike if you place that, or Stellar Wish, where you guaranteed to Stellar Wish into the Welder, or guaranteed to Acrobike into the Welder, because you know you just put it on top of your deck with the Mewtwo. But, of course, in this scenario, he does not have any Welder in his discard pile, so Mewtwo is completely useless, and he's just throwing it away. Yeah, and also, if you want to take a short look at all the cards, if you don't know exactly what they do, uh, you can uh, enter exclamation mark uh, decks, and then there is a link that brings you to our uh, website where you can take a look at some cards that they might play. Of course, it's not their exact deck lists, but at least you will be able to get some kind of overview. So Alex's first turn is not looking good. So yeah. He had to attach an energy card to his Deed Energy X. Not something you want to do at any circumstances. And he did not even get a welder to draw mm. any more cards. So he's relying on the Stellar Wish next turn. Since he knows his uh, Jirachi will survive the turn, he's just uh, he can go for a Stellar Wish, get another shot at getting a welder out of his deck. But he's already not applying pressure onto Malama, which is really important. Like you want to pressure those setup decks, those decks that need to find their basic and stage one Pokemon to be able to play the game. You want to apply pressure on early turns, but yeah, it's going to be tough for Alex to do it. Yeah, so Malama decks, um, if everything runs well for them, they can just attack with Giratina every turn um, after each other. So if for the Reshiram Charizard deck, that's very annoying because um, if it attacks twice, it deals 260 damage. So that's 10 short of actually taking a Twit knockout on Reshiram Charizard, but Giratina has an ability which allows you to place damage counters and then you also have spell attack. Uh, so if the deck runs well, they can also Twit knockout um, the uh, Reshiram Charizard. However, yes. Alex Dao is not actually playing, well, he actually he does play one. Yeah, it's a good fallback um, attacker, I think. If you're playing all these non-GX attacking options, it's good to have like one big attacker that can tank a hit in some scenarios. As we see the second Dede change come through, like, this is something I said earlier. The Custom Catcher and Dead Ennis don't go well together. I believe he has already lost two Custom Catcher um, on his second turn of the game and his reset stamp. So, yeah, you need to throw away a lot of... If, if you play those late game uh, comeback cards, you want don't want to see them uh, early with in combination with the Dene because you just throw them away to see cards that help you in the early game. But there's a welder of the Stellar Wish. Um, that's at least something, so he can 
So Alex can start uh, accelerating some energy on the board and probably will be able to take a knockout this turn and pull ahead in the price trade. Yeah, but for Alex, it's still this matchup is very diffi difficult yes. because his strategy is to use Turtonator and get uh, big knockouts for relatively n not a lot of setup. Um, however, if your opponent, if you only if you draw three press cards after Turtonator knockout, that's amazing. If you take two, that's pretty strong. But if you're only able to take one knockout at a time when your opponent doesn't need any cards to just put the Giratina active again and every time you want to attack you need Welder 2 energy then one from your hand. Um, that's pretty difficult but Alex was able to take advantage of the first uh, attachment uh, of the game using his Heatran GX which is a very nice card since it allows you to uh, move your fire energy cards. has a very decent attack and then the GX attack can also deal uh, 200, even 250, 300 damage uh, if you have enough energy attached to it. Uh, so a very good card for any deck that uses Welder. Yes, and also um, we'll be able to knock out those uh, Giratinas and just with just clean 130 later in the game, which is uh, yeah, really nice. And now the pressure's on uh, Thomas to get down his Malamas, find his energies. Um, Ideally, you want to attack on turn two with Giratina when you play Malama, but he does not have an optimal start where with two cards in hand, one of them being uh, an energy. So he just retreats with the recycle energy and um, goes for Stellar Wish, hoping to hit a supporter card. Yeah, so and now, he does. now he has the recycle energy in hand again. Very good card in this deck. Every time your Giratina gets knocked out, you can just attach it again. Uh, you can also use it to retreat um, since there are. A lot of Pokemon that only have one retreat. Uh, you have Jirachi, uh, Inkei, and the uh, Esper, uh, which all have only one retreat cost. So if you want to attack again with Giratina, uh, that's an option that always comes back. Um, but now with the Gir uh, with the Symphia, it kind of left the deck. Um, but like we already said, Thomas really needs to do something here. Um, but it's very unlikely for him to be able to attack. He needs yeah. way too much uh, for that. But he really needs to advance his board state. So next turn, at least, he can start doing some more stuff but it doesn't really look like he will be able to do a lot. I mean a Mimikyu is also a really nice attacker in this matchup because it only like if your opponent will uh, does go for the early hit run, you can just uh, hit back for 130 um, for two energy so that's what he's going for right here what he is setting up attaching the energy to the Mimikyu saying like okay even if you t um, if you KO one of my Inkeys and I don't get any Malamas next turn which is worst case scenario I can still just attach from hand to my Mimikyu and do 130 and copy any attack that you use so now it's on Alex like he needs to think what attacks do I use and what um, what do I want to b b be copied by Mimikyu? Mm, yeah, so... Well, alright. Um, on Alex side of the board, he just played his Wurge to uh, get into Jirachi. Uh, now being able to um, yeah, Stellar Wish again. For Alex, it's really annoying because uh, the only way for him to take the knockout on Jirachi is using Heatran and Thomas was he wasn't able to get any any Malamar or any uh, Giratina yet but at least he has a, a Mimikyu which he can use for the turret knockout as well but it needs less energy so it can live without um, Malamar depending on Thomas's hand he has to promote the Jirachi next turn um, but if his hand is qui quite well, like if he has a supporter card he can also just promote the uh, Mimikyu, but I guess you would probably hope to get an escape board. Uh, on of yeah, you want to get those point. Stellar Wishes in um, as much and as often as you can to pull out the mysterious treasures, communications and spell tags out of your deck. Yeah, and Alex actually going for Viridian Forest uh, for a fire energy card always feels Very kind nice. of weird. Um, but since he already had one, he can use Welder for uh, full power and he also got the Hearth uh, which makes him able to get actually another fire, another two fire energy cards in his hand, so he can attach one from hand, and then if he wants to, he can take a knockout with. Um, he can. Well, there is something going on. I'm not entirely sure what. Uh, however, um, he is able to. Wait, where was I? <laughs> well, he can hand attach and he can use uh, Turtonator for the knockout. And as we see, 
Well, there is the something being done there. The play being stopped, the turn. Well, maybe the people in the chat were probably a lot smarter than us. Maybe <laughs> we missed something. Yeah, probably. Uh, so they're getting a judge at the moment. Uh, we will know what was going on in a little bit. Um, yeah, so... if But if the board state is correct, uh, he can use Hearth to get Fire Energy cards. Um, and he already has the Welder in hand to follow it up on, uh, on future turns. But I don't... Yeah, so we will get to know uh, what was actually going on there. I just thought, well, taking with Stratonate is pretty nice. It outplays uh, Mimikyu. Okay. So basically, he attached to uh, a Turtonator. There was already one on the Dedene. He had ended up with three energy on board, and there was no welder played. Ah, uh, okay. all right, yeah, okay. So the, if there is only uh, one welder in the discard pile now, that that's actually I saw, but I thought he played a welder. I'm very sorry about not uh, saying anything about that. Uh, I was just I just assumed he played a welder. Uh, seems like he didn't. So if you saw the match, you can probably just go back to that turn and also um, see it as well that uh, there was an energy attached to the Didana very early in the game. Um, and then he attached somewhere else, and then. Yeah, um, the heat train came and uh, moved all the energy, um, but he actually seemed to uh, have attached twice in a second turn. Yes. Yeah. So currently there is uh, still a judge decision going on. Um, we will. Uh, we will be back in a little bit. Yes. Wait a sec. My man, can you cut somewhere where the players aren't shown because there okay. is a judge decision? Um, yeah, very sorry about that. Uh, so there is a judge decision currently going on, which means that we can't really show you the game state and the face cams. It's probably better to uh, turn them off right now. For us, we can't really speculate about anything, so we will just basically have to wait. Uh, talk a little bit about the matchup in general, I think. Um, so, what what do you think about the matchup? I think um, it, if Malama sets up and gets a taking from um, turn two on, I think there's not a lot that uh, Alex's deck can do to um, like to keep up in the price trade because taking knockouts for him after the heatran goes down is really resource intensive. Like. He relies on Turtonator a lot to um, to take knockouts and Neganadal. You also don't want to attack with Neganadal in this matchup um, because it does not trade one for one with Giratina usually. So um, it becomes super tough. And also, um, Thomas has the option to place damage counters on these non GX Pokemon that have like um, 110 HP and snipe them with Esper or. Um, um, swing ahead in the price trade with Espeon Deoxys in the very late game or s with spell takes. So it's really, really difficult for Alex if the Malama doesn't stumble in the early game. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, you're playing an uphill battle. Like, you're basically both playing the same deck. So um, the Esp uh, Malamar just plays, well, I have non GX Pokemon that can deal like one 130. And then Alex is also a bunch of non jx Pokemon that can deal 150 uh, without a big problems. But a Giratina, once uh, you have a setup board, Giratina just returns every yes. round, every turn. It's just there again, and y there is nothing really you can do against it. But if two Turtonators hit the discard pile, they're gone. Yeah, so, so if the Turtonators are knocked out, you have no attackers left. And even if, well, your Turtonator gets knocked out, then you always need Welder to keep going. On the one hand, but on the other hand, you can start attacking quite fast uh, because you only need supporter cards. Yes, that's which like the advantage. It yeah, has. which is something the Malama deck well can't really do. So the first few turns are very important for both players. Um, the Malama player needs to set up something. Um, 
Well, he needs to set up the Malamars, which are hard to get at the beginning, and if you are not attacking for the first few turns, then you're falling behind in prize cards, and then your opponent just needs to uh, get that going. And also, Alex always has the option to use, actually, to actually j just use the Reshiram Charizard GX. If he's able to... Um, yeah, the yeah. Reshiram, uh, the Reshiram can trade um, if if uh, he does not hit into spell tech and he um, plays it right. It can get uh, like a three uh, a three for three price trade, but that's also like yeah, you trade even, um, but you want to pull ahead. So, and you also in Alex's deck, there's uh, his only gusting effect is custom catcher. And um, he can gust around spell takes two times when it goes like perfectly, when he draws the perfect hands. After that, he's forced to hit into it. So um, that can uh, progress the game in a way when uh, the, uh, his gusts are down, then Thomas can still pull ahead even if he does not get the perfect setup. Yeah. So it's really difficult. Um, also, to get the Russian Charizard play properly, um, you need to prevent it also from getting the damage counter from Giratina, yes, which is very difficult. So you need to do it very early. To uh, you have to attack with it r f with it right away, and then also hope your opponent doesn't uh, get too much afterwards. So the Russian Charizard only really helps you if you get it early, because you can't charge it in one turn. There's no yes. way for you to attach uh, four energy in a single turn. So if you're already like if you knocked out if you already knocked out any guillotine at any point of the game, uh, you will usually fall behind anyways if you are forced to use uh, Rashi uh, Rashi 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 the uh, uh, Rashi So um, yeah, it's probably too difficult to use. So you will just want to avoid putting it down um, at all, and just m maybe you can put it down like a super late game scenario um, where you only. Um, where where you only have two prizes remaining and um, yeah you can take a knockout maybe with this GX attack or something um, this way you can pull ahead but um, yeah it's it's really really difficult also um, yeah streaming welders obviously is much more difficult than just streaming Giratinas um, due to like the consistency of the decks so yeah it's uh, it really feels very tough. Yeah, so it seems like there is still a discussion uh, going on over there. Well, yeah, then what is there else to say? Um, I think the everyone understands the deck now. It's actually really interesting. Um, yeah, Alex uh, obviously tested the deck. Now is uh, using it. He went uh, three o one until now. Very unfortunate that we are in the situation right near nothing. No one I mean, ever wants to be. I mean, um, Alex's deck, if you hit all the t uh, tag team matchups, you in, in theory, you only need to gust two times, right? To take yeah. uh, three prizes two times. So if you ha hit the Pikazex and the Mewtwo's and the Reshizat, then uh, you're good to go, right? But yeah. um, I think, I, I don't think a lot of people expected that much Malamar in general. So yeah, I think there's we don't We don't really know the meta game right now, but I think... It seems like there is a lot of Malamar at the top tables. Uh, maybe, yeah, we can we can look into that later um, later on. Yeah, hopefully we get some meta game analysis. That would be mm. fun to just uh. see what's being played. Um, yeah. Mm, yeah. So personally, I would not play Malamar as well, just <laughs> because. Well, you have you're in a big basic format. Yes. So you can just play big basic Pokemon. It's uh, very consistent. And it doesn't rely on too much, and there's not too much of an advantage gained from playing Malamar, I think. So, if you draw really well, you can win, but also your opponent... So, for example, against Ability Zard, if your opponent draws pretty m well, too, you're almost even, because your opponent can just use um, Nine Tentation every turn. Yes, uh, that's super take powerful. Take out all the Malamar, so if it goes perfectly for both players, Rashi that still wins. Yes. And if it goes for like the baseline, like a little bit abo uh, below average for both players, then Rashi also wins. Uh, so you could like with Malama, you need to draw a little bit good um, to make it work. So if both players draw as well, but n n neither of them quite perfect, then Malama can definitely win. Also, there's the time aspect of Malama, right? When you play yeah. those uh, one prize attacker uh, games, then it takes 
quite a number of turns and uh, there's always a lot of stuff that those big basic decks can do on their turns so they take even though the malama player's turn might not take very long since you on only psychic recharge attach recycle energy stellar wish retreat and attack probably um the the other players turns if they take very long and you don't get the perfect setup then uh, time would be a, a very big issue and you can mm. very easily just tie game due to drawing bad in the second one or in the first one and then not having enough time to finish uh, three yeah. games so malama would not be my pick like for best of one i really like it because yeah if you high roll then it's fine um then you just win and uh, yeah you can you can um, supplement like like the weaknesses of the deck don't feel too bad in in best of one um but in best of three uh, it's hard to for me it's hard to justify right mm, yeah but also on the other hand i always say that if you have one deck that you feel very comfortable with yeah just go even, for it even if you don't think that it's a very good meta call often you should play that deck because yes. you maybe you're a bit tired Maybe there are other things that might distract you. Um, so, if you play a very new deck and you don't feel very comfortable playing that deck, then maybe you probably won't do too well as well. Because there just need to be one situation in a tournament uh, where you overthink something, or when you're like, ah, oh, this is a very difficult situation, then you already tie the game that you yeah. could have won. Confidence is, uh, is really key. Being confident in your deck choice and in your play is really key. Yeah. As we see the players uh, setting up for the yeah. second game. All right, so since we just went straight into game two, Thomas uh, got the win for the first game. Uh, we also, uh, I, I assume we got a time extension, uh, yeah we did, so uh, we are right here for game number two. It did look, uh, the first game was very interesting, but also because there was a mistake, but without the mistake it would have just been not, not even a game, so um, yeah. yeah, pretty pretty good that that ended there. So now we can see Alex deck in action once more. Yeah, starting off with the with the Trident Earth. I don't know what the rest of his hand looks like. Um, just thinning out his deck, and hopefully he has some other ways of finding some Pokemon, and ideally weld onto it and draw some cards, get some energy on the board, and um, yeah, apply again, apply pressure in the early turns. Yeah. So Alex's first turn, not a Jirachi star. That's very unfortunate. And but he has also, to well, he, he has Welder in hand, I think. Yeah, and his hand treasure. looks pretty strong. He has Treasure, Welder, so he can go for... Uh, if, he, if he wants to, he can get the Turtonator, attach energy, draw some cards. He just needs to draw into anything usable. I think getting a Poipole here is also kind of... Uh, like you want It's a temptation, but attaching the energy is to something that can actually use it is pretty important. Yeah, you want something that, uh, like that will... Um, use the energy very well, and yeah, just go, just go Turtonator. It's fine. You can draw into Poipol eventually. Yeah, and even if you don't get it this turn, then it's it's still fine. Also, he actually drew the Mewtwo. Wait, this is a starter deck, right? This is an actual theme deck, I think. <laughs> there is a theme deck with Welder, Turtonator, and Mewtwo. <laughs> so Alex really is actually nice. the one playing an updated uh, theme deck. That's <laughs> very that's very cool to see. Uh, so he got a cut custom catcher in his hand. Um, uh, giant horror that's kind of unfortunate but yeah, since there's awesome. already one in play he can just for the next turn discard it get two fire energy cards and um, he can just get two fire energy cards and as no. we don't see a very strong start from th uh, Thomas just putting down the NK, the Mew uh, attaching the recycle energy in a spell take to the Mew and playing a Cynthia, so hopefully the Cynthia can get him some in case or some other ways to finding those. Um, yeah, and ideally you want to also get some psychic energy into the discard pile this turn, so you can recover them. And you need a follow up supporter. So yeah, you you, you really need a lot of cards of those Cynthia. So um, yeah, you need a very. S you you want a very strong setup before you place your supporter because Ma uh, Malama needs a lot of cards turn two, um, but it does not look like this uh, is happening right now. So we just see the Giratina being discarded. 
and he will probably retreat into the archie and go for a stellar wish shop to find some uh, useful items yeah this is a big brain play where you just oh your opponent played hearth so a uh, giant hearth i can just discard my giratina for free check my prize card and then make uh, start to make good decisions from there on oh, yeah, um, and he actually goes for uh, 30 on the dana which i thought about this word i well, it really depends on his hand cards, because most of the times uh, just drawing, getting a better setup is more important. Uh, but he puts 30 damage on the Dana, which puts it down to 130, which is a magical number for Giratina as well. Um, yeah. But it's it's impossible for Thomas to actually attack with Giratina next turn. Uh, so I think with all the Gust effect, this is a very... Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe this play won't really be too important on the one hand. Then on the other hand, he can always poke it uh, every time he uses Giratina uh, later in the game, and then maybe he just gets two tags, uh, two um, spell tags off, and then yes. uh, he might be able to finish it off. But yeah, probably not too important. But also, like the other Pokemon, you want to no have points, you always want to have so damage on board when yeah. playing. There, Mama. there are a lot of different things you can use. But also, he plays Esper, I suppose. Yeah, he does. Yeah, so I with think. the Esper, just one spell tag, and then. The Dan is already in knockout range. But we see a double custom catcher on the only in K and ah, the Turtonator really will be able to get the knockout. And this is the situation you don't want to be in as a Malama player. Having no option to get a Malama on board. And he, uh, Alex even um, has enough energy on his Turtonator to just attack next turn and KO whatever is in front of him uh, if it's a one prizer. Um, and pull ahead even further in the price trade. And this is looking really good for Alex. Um, very often, like, what I find really weird about Turtonator is that you can also, of course, you can discard energy from itself, and then it becomes a debate, like, do I, do I discard any energy from the active one, or do I only discard from the bench? Like, in Alex's situation currently, he knows this Turtonator is there to stay. There is no way for Thomas to actually take a knockout here. Um, yes. He, there is not there is no Pokemon that would be able to even even if he had even if he would have a Malamar he could only worst case he could attack with um, yeah he could attack with Jinx he could attack with um, Mimikyu both of them don't do anything here so Alex just if, if he gets a Welder next turn that would be very nice for him but even if he doesn't he can still discard energy active so still fine. Uh, very very important for him to get the very first knockouts like we uh, talked about during our. Uh, short discussion earlier uh, but this time Thomas actually is going to go down the uh, ink yeah street. getting down um, two ink at once is really important but Alex plays custom catcher so you know your ink will be pretty safe unless he gets like the second I mean, double custom oh, catcher yeah really this is soon. nothing I would actually expect yeah so you you would assume that your malamas or soon to be malamas are really yeah. safe on the bench and that you can continue setting up Versus, well, if Alex um, yeah w if um, uh, the Malama player would actually be up against nine tails this would be really really dangerous but since Alex is playing custom catcher it's uh, pretty fine and you can just continue to try and set up your your one prizes attack with Mew let the spell take get, get activated and play some more um, yeah, play some more damage counters with Mew on your opponent's board to set up for the incredible comeback potential that Malama has um, in the these late game turns. Yeah, but now it's actually very difficult to put the damage counters because you could just put them on the Dedenne that would immediately put it in knockout range for um, an Esper or you can put it on Jirachi which puts it um, in knockout range for spell tech. But if you put it on Jirachi now, the Mew will... De well, unless he gets another double catcher, which uh, I wouldn't assume, um, the Mew will get knocked out. And then Thomas actually just draws an extra card. Uh, yes. So he has more options to get his Giratina, Energy cards, Malamar, more in case. Uh, so this play is definitely pretty strong, uh, just because of the extra uh, card advantage gained here um, as well. So the Mew putting in a lot of work here, setting up yes, some really. uh, great plays for Thomas. He is kind of falling behind right now, but he got two Inke, he got Jirachi uh, with a board. He even got the Ditto Prison Star as well, so next turn he might even be able to um, take a knockout here with uh, Giratina. And uh, he even gets back his uh, energy cards. Now he can spell tag. Probably on the... Oh, he actually splits, so he can use his Giratina from the discard pile 
to take the knockout very, after very he nice. well after he drawn but like so most of the times because he will take the prize card this turn anyways you would want to know which prize card you get because the prize card you get is always random you you can't know which you, one you get but then if you have that knowledge you can make better decisions on the uh, stellar wish but if you stellar wish first you have to assume like oh that card is good when i draw this prize card and that card is good when i draw this prize card uh, so you have to guess so usually it makes more sense to just um, take it but also for thomas it's just a free prize card that he can basically take whenever he wants so oh okay he got the uh, lily in hand so this way he doesn't draw it now ah, but that's he actually super first smart, and yes. then he can use giratina yeah, so a lot of uh, yeah interesting uh, stuff happening here. Definitely something uh, to learn, I think. And th this is a really good acrobike. Oh, he actually discards the Viridian Forest. I was like, oh. okay, Malama wants energy in the discard pile. He wants Viridian Forest to get energy out of his deck. But he makes the opposite decision and throws away the Viridian Forest to get the... Uh, psychic energy in his hand. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now he takes the knockout with this distortion. This is door. coming really nicely together. And he can still Stellar Wish. Yeah, he Super can. Super nice. He can Stellar Wish. He does need uh, Malamars. Uh, let's see. I think <laughs> there is one Malamar in his hand. He got an Acro Bike. Um, he has the uh, Recycle. Well, he actually already attached the Recycle energy. Yeah, to the to the Esper. Well, this is actually really nice. So usually if you would you say, okay, if I, if there are six damage counters on the Daniel, that's the magic now to take the knockout. But also, if there are fifty damage counters, you can just put one hundred, and then, and then at some point with Giratina, just uh, take it. There is no way Alex is able to get rid of that damage. Yes, but and so he's playing a really nice to uh, attack with Esper with Eukinesis. So does he have mysterious treasure I or one Malamar. communication? He definitely has one Malamar in his hand, um, going for the Dito Prison. Oh, that's oh, why he discarded he the Viridian, because yeah, he plays Power Plant. really good. Um, Alex has... Well, he played two, well, but he only has one in his discard pile, uh, since he used the Mewtwo. Um, but... Oh, he just promotes Giratina. That's uh, That's also fine. Yeah, that's fine. He can, he can reuse the ability and also the spell tech triggers. Um, he forces Alex to discard three energy cards. If he leaves the Jirachi active, of course, that will probably just get knocked out. So he doesn't really get any anything from it. Yeah, and if really Alex decides to, to do nothing, Thomas still can just switch, get an extra Stellar Wish off. Um, Alex misses the price trade and is already um, behind. Um, Alex is already now kind of in a very weird position because uh, Thomas... He has a very Esper, threatening board state. Yeah, his board state looking very nice. Um, the Esper is always a threat where he can uh, turn over the whole price trade. And yeah. Alex has to continue to take price cards now. He doesn't really have a chance. And yeah, but like he we gets just Welder yeah. um, of the of the Dead Age range, so he can Welder onto something else and at least um, yeah, fuel his board with resources for the following turn, right? He can uh, Welder attached to the Turtonator and have another Pokemon with three uh, energies on board as he actually decides to get rid of his Poipoi. Um, keeping that bench space open for the Hooper, I think he has in his hand. So the Hooper is really nice. Um, against Malama, if you uh, don't activate custom, uh, if you don't activate, activate spell, spell tech, tech yeah. um, because then the Malama player can just put the damage counters on the Hooper and it trades one for one and it does not really accomplish anything. So playing the Hooper is a fine tech versus Malama, but it it, uh, it gets really efficient if you combine it with either the Ninetales uh, Continuous Gust or Lysander Labs to yeah. turn, uh, turn off spell takes. Yeah, so here's a Welder only for one. Seems like he's pretty set of not attacking with that Turtonator. Uh, otherwise, he could have yeah, attached to and get rid of them yes. on the one hand. But then on the other hand, also, he would pro the Turtonator will get knocked out. Well, actually, not. I wouldn't be too sure, since Thomas can also take the uh, knockout on the Denon now. Yes, he so can. So this is ah, uh, this is such a weird board position, since uh, but. And Alex will be stuck with his Turtonator in the active with uh, one energy on it, and yeah, Thomas smartly putting the damage counter on the Hoopa, setting it up um, for later to be a one shot. Plus, uh, yeah, he needs he needs uh, distortion door and the one thirty from Shadow Impact to. KO it, but that's no problem for him. Yeah, he top take the Malama, very nice. <laughs> uh, so, nice this one. is how this deck needs to be running. Um, if he gets another 
Well, you only have uh, access to one. Uh, you only have one access to one Esper, right? So there yes. is nothing that can get it back from the discard pile. So he can only use this taking two prize cards at once play a single time. So it's always very relevant to uh, keep in mind when it's the best yeah, uh, want to time uh, to find to find the perfect timing. Yeah, so currently if um, yeah, if you use Esper now, Alex needs the Weller to take the knockout. But also if you attack with Giratina now, then there's the Hooper. If you attack into Hooper with Esper, the Esper will also get knocked out uh, right away. So uh, maybe this turn might be one of the turns where Thomas might get away with just using Esper and then not getting knocked out. Um, Alex would need a switch and an energy card. Or he just decides to race Alex until the very end and then uh, after Try Alex to took clean two up. knockouts, then you're just, well, take the knockout here with a Giratina. I hope he doesn't get the knockout here because he needs a lot of cards. So maybe just if Thomas is using his Giratina to run down the resources from Alex, that might be uh, one of the routes to take here. But it does not look like it. Uh, he already attached from hand, so it seems like he's going to use Esper, uh, yes. knocking out that big Dan of GX. Yeah, and then we will see if Alex is actually able to take the knockout. Yeah, Alex needs a switch definitely to get this Turtonator out of the active. Um, or, or just welder onto welder, it yeah. and uh, take the knockout this way. But Thomas is, will replace the Giant Earth wi with his power plant, so shutting off any Dedenne that Alex might play to draw some cards. Um, yeah. Alright, so we saw the knockout. Um, Alex's hand is actually pretty big. Um, but and I there's don't no spell take on the on the Esper, so that's also really good. Because he won't uh, like take any extra damage. Yeah, there's the there's the switch to get the Turtonator out of the active. Yeah, so now it's just a race. Um, is Alex able to keep up for two additional turns? Uh, he needs Welder, two energy, and then some kind of attacker. Yes. Was there a Turtonator knocked out already? I don't think there was. We're gonna see now probably since uh. Thomas checking the discard pile. No. No, I so don't the, see the only po the, the Pokemon Thomas knocked out was the Jirachi, right? And the Dedenna? Yes. So Alex needs now Welder, two energy, Turtonator, another energy. And then uh, he's actually able to win the game if actually if everything goes according to Keikaku. <laughs> uh, he is able to just do that really quick. Uh, but for Thomas, I don't think there is some... Wait, how much HP does Mewtwo have? Um, 110, right? Yeah, it's well, I think yeah. it's 110. With 110, he can't really do anything cool. Like, uh, But you take, you take a knockout... No. Maybe um, actually the 30 damage that are now on the Dedenne that might, might be have relevant. Been relevant. So if you put it on the Mewtwo with two spell tags and one Giratina, it would go up to 120 to but take an additional. But knockout. also um, he could like leave the Giratina in the active, let it get knocked out, and then um, finish the game with an SP on the Oxus, which he might play and just put 10 damage counters onto the Dedenne um, um, next turn. Which would be enough to oh take the knockout. Oh yeah, I completely forgot the uh, the tag team. Yeah, so with the GX attack from um, yes, uh, SP on Deoxys, yeah. you can actually put ten damage counter where you want, and that would just enable uh, Thomas to take two prize cards. So he does not even need to the extra three energy to get the extra effect. He just can wait for Alex to activate the spell tag, and then. Um, yeah, so yeah. he just needs to draw into a um, any any search card. He already has three Malamar on his bench. Um, just get it going. So yeah, I completely forgot about. <laughs> I always forget about that because <laughs> Malamar is always just like Giratina, 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 and but you have a bunch of spell attacks. But it's such a strong it, right? card. Yeah, we already saw that um, when when uh, Adam Hawkins played earlier. He used also used his uh, one prizes all the time and then cleaned up with one GX attack in the late game for the game. So I think that's like the optimal um, uh, like the ideal approach that Malama should take obviously if you start your GXs there's nothing you can do about it really unfortunate but now the pressure is on Alex to do anything he needs to get this knockout if he wants to keep up in this game at uh, like at any point yeah so if he gets the knockout then uh, Thomas 
is at the uh, better position here. He can use JX attack to just take the knockout. Um, he, yeah, he has three Molomar in play. Um, there is still the, um, yeah, as long as the spell tag gets activated at some point, but then also if Alex doesn't activate the spell tag, yeah, then what, it is he, becomes what is really he doing? Tough. He already used two of his, um, yeah, he did he scoop? Yeah. Yeah. I think there was just no way. Yeah, the um, writing on the wall. I would have actually just, well, yeah. I mean, if he, he doesn't get the knockout, nothing happens. He if would he have needed custom catcher and uh, and the welder and energy. So it was just really tough. Yeah, just way too much to ask for. Like in theory, he could have won if he got the double custom catcher. He already played two, so it was. It was extra, really unlikely. E yeah, extra unlikely, um, but. Yeah, rather, rather unfortunate. Uh, it's, um, it's not the best matchup for Alex's deck, but it's definitely a really interesting approach, uh, supplementing your one price attackers with the Naganadels, even though he did not set up Naganadels this time around. Um, but yeah, Thomas just w was able to execute the Malama gameplay uh, game plan perfectly and um, threaten an endgame scenario where Alex has just no choice. If you attack into the Giratina, you lose. If you don't attack, you lose as well. So, yeah, really, just really tough um, for for Alex in this situation. Yeah, all right. So there was a lot of time on the clock left on the one hand, but on the other hand, uh, we did give them a time extension. So I'm not actually. I think there are like six minutes on the round. Uh, so we might actually just get Thomas here to have a little chat with him about Malamar. So uh, we will cut you a short break, and then we will be back in a bit. Bye. Hello and welcome back. I'm here mit, uh, with Thomas. Um, so let's let's just uh, ask the question in room. Okay. Why do you play Malamar? Well, I don't know. It's uh, I, I use I, in Sheffield. I play the ability rushes art, and the deck felt like super strong, super great against everything. But suddenly it was like so many mirror matches, and it was like I, it didn't feel right to base uh, the game on a going flip, so I decided to beat the Ability Rush Zard and during playtesting a lot of my friends uh, are playing Malamar a lot and I was like, it works when it works, so mm. I'll, I'll try to make it like working and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> did you did you test a lot with the deck in before? Yeah, yeah. I so during during testing, um, like how, how, how did the deck feel? Like did you draw dead draw a lot or was it just like any other deck for you? I mean I thought I would be dead drawing way more than I than I was and suddenly it, it became like w w it, it it works like like not really badly. Mm. So, and I, I was surprised by, by how the deck works nowadays since uh, I was a bit of a hater of the Malamar back, back in older format okay. and and I didn't want to ever bring it. It was like Greninja for me, which is like mm, somehow yeah. still. Uh, and I had to join the dark side, I guess, for because, because it just felt so strong. It yeah, it so works. it's really cool because when I just looked at it for the first time, I was like, okay, so the deck is just you attack with Giratina as often as you can, but the spell tags and then you have Esper and the uh, Deoxys, Mm -hmm. It it's really interesting. So for the very last game, you could have used spell tag and then Deoxys to win the game. I think. Yeah, I I was fishing for the Deoxys. Yeah, I actually I actually completely forgot that. I was like, nah, well, like the thirty on the um, on the dead end is kind of weird. Like uh, probably it might might be a difference, but the Esper gets knocked out, so there's no way to mm -hmm. the, uh, damage the bench, but also. Yeah, I was like, yeah, well, you, could, you just have Des Esper and Deoxys. It's so good in yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. end game. I, I tried to fish for it to, to have it, but I wasn't able. But Alex just whiffed a lot of things. Mm -hmm. He told me that he had to dump the, the uh, Nagas and Poipols, which is like something that he has to do against Malamar that it's like needed. And yeah. he, he had to dump them off. So Yeah, so against Malamar for the opponent, so let's... Let's have your opponents a little bit. If you play Malamar, and what, what do you want your opponent uh, not to do? So in this matchup, I would assume if he attacks very early, that's if he, if that's he, a problem, I mean, right? if, he, if he takes out in case, that's bad. But you still, if you are, if you have one lone in K, you still he he KO'd it in the in the second game, I think. And then I benched three more in the in, sec in yeah, the next round, in the which next is turn. like you can you can use our custom catchers. I don't care. I still have a lot of a lot of other resources to get my small things out. 
and um, afterwards Malamar is like it can come back from from even not really good state of the game, which with with the help of the spell tags and with the like amazing attacks as such as Jinx, which is I didn't oh, yeah, really you play Jinx? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't play it uh, at the, at the cup in Czech Republic, but uh, I decided that I need it for the for the uh, nine tails. Which just sits there and guzmas or catches yeah. the my my uh, nine tails, uh, my malamars. So I was like, I can hit it with one spell tag, maybe jump out of Giratina, then I go with with put with Jinx. He usually has full bench, yeah. So it's like put five wherever you want them. Not bad, not bad attack. What what were your matchups today? Yeah, D uh, I beat two ability rushes arts. I beat one Catter Day deck. What? Catcher Catcher day. Oh yeah, 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 the, the yeah, yeah. It, it was actually pretty good, oh, okay. uh, but I was avoiding his spell tech, so he didn't have the option to get me back. I tied with fossils, which is like should be a good matchup for me, but I didn't play test it, so I guess I made some suboptimal plays in there. That's like three or one, and that yeah, and, and yeah, that, okay. that was the ma last matchup. So a lot of fire. And uh, I see a lot of fire around the tables yeah, as well. Yeah, like, like expected. So you used mm -hmm. your jinx to just get some knockouts on wolf picks, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 if he if he hits your spell tag, it's super easy to KO the nine tails with the esper or with jinx. That's the, the big idea. Yeah. So <laughs> if he if he pulls out like two nine tails at the same time, I just scoop. Mm. Like okay. usually, if 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 he also has more res other resources such as energies and welders, and if he's Doing what the deck usually is doing, I don't have a chance. But if he struggles somewhere, which usually Vulpix is something that you are without nest balls, like not really um, possible. It's not really possible to set up it, set it up um, frequently, like at in pairs or or even free Vulpix are nowadays played in the in the ability rush art, which is also something that I am not really fond of <laughs> because I need to take yeah. them out. But well. but yeah. All right, so the uh, main hall now had time out, so I want to give you some time to yeah, prepare. Yeah, thank you. So uh, congratulations thank on you your win. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, we will uh, cut to a short break, and then we'll see you in a bit. Don't go away.